Let's talk about the different ways how you can bring images and video material into Fusion's 3D environment. You have the image 3D node, you can attach images to any shape 3D objects and you can use camera projection. And there's actually a difference between these uh, different methods and I want to elaborate a little bit on this. Uh, I noticed that there seems to be a little bit of confusion out there. Recently I created a let's say medium complex camera projection in my free Fusion course and afterwards some people asked me, hey, I can just put image planes, isn't that much easier? Um, and the answer is obviously yes and no, and uh, there are differences to consider. Okay, let me start by bringing a simple image plane here. Image plane 3D is the object, and by the name of it, it sounds like this is the default object to bringing in images, and if you think that, then you are probably right. So now I have a plane in my 3D environment, and I have here a few images, so my 3D environment already has a camera, which is a bit uh, backwards from, from zero, and a render node, so I have set this up up front, and I have a few different images here, which I loaded via the media in, in DaVinci Resolve, and now I can attach them to the image plane and see what happens. So here I have my uh, simple cabin footage, some photograph, I attach it to the image plane and it's immediately in 3D. The good thing about the image plane is that it considers the aspect ratio of the, of the image and the resolution of the image. So the image plane automatically scales to the dimensions of the picture. If I load this panorama here, you can see in the 3D viewer what happens. So now I have a different sized image plane, uh, it adjusts to the aspect ratio. Now that's the main difference between using an image plane and just attaching an image to a shape 3D plane. So instead I could put here a plane, let's put a shape 3D object, let's uh, disable this for a second or, or disconnect and let me attach something to this shape 3D. And now you see my image here is distorted because my shape 3D has a different aspect ratio. So by default uh, this is also giving me a plane if I don't change it and this plane has uh, dimensions of like one up, uh, one by one by default, and unless I change it to the correct aspect ratio of the image, I will get a distorted image on this. So in general, when I attach any uh, photographs or images to 3D objects, unless it's the image plane, it will just um, get textured onto the object. So I can also use a cube, for example, and depending on what shapes I use, I will see the image applied in different ways. So for example, if I have a cube here, then you see the image gets uh, automatically attached to all the, all the different sides at the same time. Um, or if I use a cylinder, you see it gets like wrapped around the cylinder, uh, and this is just the way how textures are being applied. Um, so certain images, for certain images, this may make sense. Uh, first of all, of course, if you have textures from uh, 3D objects, from 3D programs, then they're meant to be attached this way, of course. If you just have photographs, in some cases it might still make sense. For example, here if I have a panorama photograph or like a, a, like a cyclorama, which you know is like stitched together from like 360 degrees, then I might actually attach it to a cylinder. So I can attach this panorama here to my shape 3D cylinder, and let's see where it is in the 3D scene compared to the camera. Um, so if I, if I move the cylinder in the center of the camera, or the camera into the center of the cylinder, and get the radius probably a bit up, you see on the right side, then this is starting to look uh, correct from the camera perspective. Now the camera is looking into my uh, 360 cyclorama. So if I want to, if I have some uh, 3D camera movement, either from 3D tracking or I have some 3D motion graphics and I want to use a cyclorama for, for a background, then I could do it this way. Now my camera can rotate in this and look around and I have a wonderful background and I can do, uh, you know, some, some camera animation in here. Same with the shape 3D, if you have a, a 360 degree image or a VR image or one of these um, HDRI maps which you can, can download uh, from the internet or even shoot yourself if you know how. So if you have these kind of 360 uh, wrapped around images, then you can attach it uh, not to a cylinder but to a sphere in that case. So let's change it to a sphere and bring this radius up probably 
and let's have a look into this. So now my camera is inside of a sphere and can look in all directions and from the center it will look fine. So this is all by just attaching the image to the uh, texture input or 2D image input of the shape 3D. And again, if your image was uh, made for this, like a 360 image onto a sphere or a panorama onto a cylinder, uh, then it will look fine. Otherwise, it gets just terribly distorted and uh, it doesn't make any, any sense, right? Um, now, if you have a normal sized picture and still want to have it onto different uh, geometry without this kind of distortion, then you can use projection. So let's set this up quickly. Let's say I have, I have here a clouds image, just a normal photograph. And let's see, I now want to have like a sky dome. I want to have like a, a round uh, shaped skype in the background so that my camera can move a little bit left, right, up, down. Um, and I still have a, a proper sky in the background. Now, I can do this with this and if I just attach it to a sphere it will get distorted to the side, right? But instead I can use a projector and project it onto whatever geometry I have in the background. So if I now attach a camera here, this camera automatically, if I have an image input into a camera, then the camera automatically turns into a projector. You can also use a projector node, by the way, it's basically the same thing. Usually I just use the camera because I have it right here. So I have attached my image to the camera. I have here now projection controls and perspective projection. So you can usually leave the default. So the same way how you have controls, how a camera captures an image about focal length and angle of view and so on, you have kind of the opposite for projecting images. And now the camera, if I attach it to the scene, it lives now somewhere in the scene and uh, projects into it. Let me go back to a plane for now, just uh, for demonstration. And right now I don't think I see anything here because my plane is where? Let's see. So my camera projector is here. Uh, let me bring the camera projector back to roughly where the, the scene camera is and my shape 3D I bring back into the center. Okay, so now I have a shape or a plane here which is just white and I see something in the background and there are a few things now. So first of all the background is coming um, from from this. So if I attach an image to the camera, it just says enable image plane and this just means that an image plane is put to the far background. This uh, can sometimes be useful. So if I use a camera at the same time to film and I want to attach a background directly in instead of merging it in 2D, uh, sometimes you can use this, sometimes it can help to align things, uh, but generally I will just turn this image plane off. Um, what I do turn on is enable camera projection and now I still don't see anything and here it says projection mode ambient light. So in this case my camera is working like, or my projector, this camera is now a projector, is working like a light source. So instead of just white light it is projecting light well, it's projecting my photograph. But enable to, in order to see light I actually need to enable lighting. So let me enable lighting in my 3D scene and in my renderer. And now you see what's happening. I have a dark shape 3D and wherever my camera projection hits, there I see the light. So now if I move my shape around, you see what's happening. It is just in different areas of the, in different places in the 3D scene and capturing the uh, image that is being projected um, as per, the, as per the size of the projector, right? So if I'm in the front, it, I have a very small projection close to the projector. If I'm in the back, the projection gets large. Here it's now larger than my image and the plane captures it. Um, and this is different, of course, to the image plane because the image plane would just stay in one aspect ratio uh, and in one size and I can just move it uh, anywhere I want. With the projector, if I now turn this, uh, you can get, uh, for example, tilted geometry um, like this and you get uh, the, the perspective uh, automatically um, uh, considered on this uh, projection. Coming back to what I discussed, making a sky dome, for example. So in this case, I can make this 
again a sphere. Let's go back, make it a sphere. And my sphere is now uh, solid and, and round. So let's open it up with the angle. And I'll just bring it to the side uh, just to open it. And I don't need it underneath. So I just make it for the, for the sky. And let's bring it back a bit um, with the 3D controls. And this way you see where this is going. So I am projecting my 2D image onto the 3D geometry. And now I have a slightly bent background here. So depending on maybe I should have kept it a bit closer and instead bring the camera projector back. That's probably the better solution. So let's bring this back so that my scene still stays close to the center. So I just bring this uh, projector back. And the projector now projects the image like this onto the scene. Now, of course, it's still a rectangular image and the resolution and so on uh, may not be, be sufficient depending on uh, how far you, you stretch it. Uh, but it actually is from the, from the view of the projector, it is still the flat image, uh, but it is hitting the round sphere. Uh, and this way, the image doesn't get distorted like the way it does when I just attach it to the sphere. If you want to look at a more complex projection example, for example, look at this uh, sample here from my free fusion course. So here I did the camera projection onto uh, different planes and some of them are tilted. And this way they, the projector again from the perspective of the uh, camera, it just looks straight, but then you can do camera movement in 3D and you actually have captured um, kind of, uh, I have tried to recreate parts of this terrain in 3D by tilting planes a little bit and thereby get a better parallax and a better sense of 3D by actually having shapes uh, that are tilted in the 3D direction. Now, last thing to note about projection in the sample I did just now, I used ambient light as the projection mode. The problem with light is light can only make objects lighter, but cannot make them transparent. So if I, uh, you see here the black boundaries, uh, that may be an issue, right? So if I want to project something into a scene and you have transparent edges or so, um, then light will never cause transparency. Light will only make brighter or, or less bright. Um, if you need that, you need to switch here to texture. And in this case, you need a, a texture is at the end a material property that needs to be generated somewhere. And for this, you need to add a catcher node, which is called catcher here. And I attach the catcher to my um, shape 3D. And now you see the black boundaries are gone. So my, my catcher in this case, uh, caught the camera projection and now the catcher is generating a material which can actually uh, uh, include transparency. So whenever you have transparency, you need to set your camera projection to texture mode and then add a catcher to whichever 3D object should catch the projection from the camera. The catcher node has another advantage. Maybe you have uh, multiple 3D objects, but only some should catch the projection. So only the ones which have the catcher attached will catch the projection. And you can further restrict this if you want. You can restrict by projector ID. So you can give a projector ID here and you can give a projector ID here. And then only the catcher which matches the projector ID of the projector will catch the projection. So you can uh, project different images in the same scene and then have different objects in the scene uh, capture those, those images. All right, I hope this little round trip around attaching images, projecting images and so on was, was useful and clarified a few things. I will try to put this into a more practical example in one of the next tutorials. So stay tuned for this in the next weeks. And thanks for watching. My name is Bernd. See you next time. Can last a long time You'll never know